There are many things that have to be taken into consideration to make an engine rev higher than how it was originally engineered. Now, most K24s, they rev to about 7,000 RPMs. That means that the pistons travel at an average of 23 and a half meters per second. The older K20s, they were able to rev to about 8,200. Now, that was only because they have a shorter stroke, so the piston has less distance to travel. You can't just use a tuner to change the rev limiter of your car to make more power. More often than not, you need to do a lot of hardware changes to be able to take advantage of that extra RPM. RPM that your engine is going to be revving. With stock engine internals and a raised engine RPM, you can easily damage something. Given you're running pump gas, you're going to need to engineer the engine to be able to spin faster so we can make a bunch more power in the top end reliably. The secret is a combination of airflow, piston speed, fueling, low reciprocating weight, and well-balanced engine internals. The internal combustion engine is an air pump, so the better that it can breathe, the more power it can make. The cylinder head design on this K24A2 flows rather well, as it has VTEC on the intake and exhaust, which allows more air to flow in and out of the combustion chamber. The engine block is a K24, which has a displacement of 2.4 liters. The engine here will make about 200 horsepower. To extract another 100 horsepower out of it without adding a turbo or supercharger means nothing can be overlooked. Now before getting too far into this video, I just want to give you guys an idea as to where you can find all the parts that you guys are going to be seeing for this build. I have a spreadsheet linked inside the description box that is the complete up-to-date list as of right now for all the parts on this build. As I keep progressing with this build, that list is going to be updated and you guys can find everything there including parts, specs, torque specs, and other additional information that you guys are going to need to get this done. The cylinder head will require the most amount of work to produce the necessary CFM rate for this build. The cylinder head itself will require porting since the inlet and outlet ports are not large enough. I purchased a CNC ported Skunk 2 Ultra intake manifold from 4 Piston Racing with the intentions to use it to gasket match and port the cylinder head myself with the appropriate specs. This allowed me to hand port my head with very good accuracy, however it's the second best thing to getting 4 Piston CNC ported cylinder head that costs upward of 2 grand. Now, considering I won't be competing with this car, that price doesn't justify the gains in my opinion. After using some milling bits and tools, I was able to remove all of the casting lines, eliminate the imperfections, knife edge the runners, and smoothen out the shape of the runners to match the intake manifold and the thermal gasket. I have more information in my spreadsheet regarding these details. The components in the head, such as the stock camshafts, will not suffice for this build. The K24A2 cams are some of the best OEM camshafts that you can pick up. However, they still aren't adequate for our NA300 horsepower goal. I'm swapping them out for Drag Cartel 3.2 camshafts. They have both longer duration and lift over the stock cam profiles while keeping the characteristics of a street camshaft. The intake cam will allow more air to enter into the combustion chamber and the exhaust cam will allow that air to escape more freely. As for the valve train components, to safely and reliably increase the rev limiter without allowing valve float, you want to remove as much weight as possible while increasing the valve spring pressure. To accomplish that, I'm using SuperTech 92 pound dual beehive valve springs with titanium retainers to keep the 1mm larger upgraded valves seated at high RPMs. The intake valves are made from stainless steel and are 36 millimeter in size, while the exhaust valves are made from sodium filled inconel and are 31 millimeters in size. They're both much better materials than the stock and will be able to reliably withstand 600 horsepower turbo builds, let alone the 300 horse that we're shooting for. Still working inside the cylinder head, on the timing chain side of the intake cam, we find the VTC actuator. It uses oil pressure to continuously phase the camshaft up to 25 degrees on this engine. To extract more power out of the timing system, I'm upgrading the VTC actuator to one that can phase up to 40 degrees. You can also use an OEM Honda one that can phase up to 50 degrees. However, given the camshafts and valves that I'm using, a 50 degree VTC gear will interfere with the pistons. The pistons and connecting rods in this engine are both cast and heavier than a forged counterpart. Removing reciprocating weight from the rotating assembly will allow the engine to rev higher and faster. The forged aluminum Wysico pistons are not only lighter and stronger than the OEM ones, but they have a higher compression than the factory 11 to 1 pistons. That will help the engine make more bang while staying naturally aspirated. To reduce the reciprocating mass even more, the stock connecting rods are getting swapped out for forged manly H-beam rods. Again, lighter and stronger. All of those components are being mated to the factory forged Honda crankshaft. The stock K24 rotating assembly can handle over 500 horsepower stock, which makes the crank more than capable to support the 300 that we're aiming for. 
The stock oil pump, however, is not quite that capable. The rev limiter on a stock Accord prevents the engine from revving past 7200 RPMs. The secondary forces from the crankshaft get cancelled out by the balance shafts in the oil pump. When the stock oil pump revs upwards of 8 grand, the oil cavitates and the pressure drops which leads to engine failure. So to get around that issue, I'm swapping the pump for one found in an older Acura RSX engine. A straight swap will allow the engine to rev to 8,000 all day long without any issues. However, to rev past that reliably, that pump needs to be ported more, which moves the cavitation issues from 8,000 to well past 9,000 RPMs. And I know for a fact I won't be revving my engine past that. This here is by far the best insurance that you can buy for any K-Series engine. Given all those modifications, we'll be able to flow more air and shift the power band towards higher RPMs, which in turn will give us much more power. The main reason why I want to stay naturally aspirated is I want to keep my Honda engine reliable. I've owned my Accord since 2012 and have put over 160,000 kilometers on it. I redline my engine literally every single time I drive the car and I've taken it to the racetrack, I drive it all year round and yet I've only had to perform the regular maintenance on the car. The odometer is at 235,000 right now and I figured it's time to give the Accord the engine it deserves. Before I wrap up this video, I just want to mention some of the supporting mods that are going to be needed to run that much power. The stock clutch and flywheel will need to be swapped out for a kit that I have here from ACT. The flywheel is much lighter than stock, while the clutch disc and pressure plate will be able to withstand the added power and torque. Upgraded engine mounts are also a really good idea to do when you swap out your engine. The entire intake system needs to be reworked since the engine will require much more air to make that necessary power. I'll be getting a custom 4 inch intake fabbed up and that mated to a larger throttle by wire throttle body. With the extra intake air, we can spray more fuel into the combustion chamber which means we'll need larger injectors. I'm swapping the stock ones out for 410cc Acura RDX injectors. Now I might need to swap out the fuel pump at some point, but as of now, the stock one will suffice. Since the engine will be receiving more air, we need to ensure that that air can exit. I'll be needing some custom headers with a full 3 inch cap back to fully take advantage of the mods done to this engine. I don't want the exhaust system to be the bottleneck of the powertrain, so that's why I'm swapping the entire thing out even though I just got an upgraded exhaust last year. As I mentioned earlier, the easier the engine can breathe, the more power it can make. I'll be bringing most of my parts to my machinist to ensure everything can work in unison. The secret to a high revving engine is getting all these components to work in harmony. The only OEM parts that I'm going to be reusing are the crankshaft, the engine block, the oil pan, the camshaft towers, and the OEM sensors. Everything else will be upgraded to make a high revving, high horsepower, naturally aspirated, built K24. I have a fully up-to-date parts list that's going to be found in every video that's going to come regarding this build. So if you guys are curious, you guys want to see what's going to be going on, you guys can check out the parts list and all that additional information that's going to be found in that sheet. If you guys want to build a 300 horsepower, naturally aspirated K24, get that sheet, download it, click on it, and stay up to date with it, and you'll know exactly what you'll need, and you'll know what you need to do to get that done. If you guys aren't subscribed, make sure that you click the sub button and the little bell notification so that you guys get notified whenever I put a new video out for this build. If you guys have any further questions regarding this build, you guys can put them down in the comment section down below. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.